Welcome to Alex Cheese Aquarium, everybody. Today I am talking about exterior finishing the 4200 gallon aquarium. After more than seven months and hundreds of hours of work, and finally say exterior finishing is completed by far of any single part of this build, the exterior finishing was the most labor intensive part. And today I want to talk about the style and finish of the exterior on the aquarium. I also want to talk about its functionality as that is a critical component to the proper operation of this aquarium. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video about how I built anything on the exterior finishing. So if you have a specific question, go ahead and leave it down below in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best I can. When it comes to style and finish and functionality of the aquarium exterior, I stuck to some guiding principles. First, I wanted to make sure that I could get this aquarium exterior finished in a reasonable amount of time. Second, I wanted to stick to a budget and make sure that I wasn't going overboard on the cost of this exterior finishing. Third, I want to make sure aesthetically I was happy with the way the exterior finishing was going to look. More importantly, I want to make sure my wife was happy with the way this looked as that's a really big selling point for coming down in the basement and looking at the aquarium. And finally was functionality. No matter what I did with the exterior finishing, I couldn't compromise the necessary functionality. Now the first thing I needed to do was choose the materials for the exterior and I wanted to stick with materials that were locally available at a Home Depot or a Menards and then also utilize any material I might have on hand from the build. I've also had some other lumber that I've had for many many years and I wanted to be able to repurpose some of that if possible. It helped me cut down significantly on cost. So for materials, I think first thing I needed to do was get the main canopy door panels figured out. Now there's 11 of them in total. For these I went with half inch birch plywood and used them on all the top canopy panels. I also used half inch birch plywood on the bottom seal beam covers on top and along the back of the aquarium where I have all of my plumbing and ventilation set up that also has been covered over with half inch birch plywood. Now, I also use 3 16 inch birch plywood on all the column covers and also on the skirts of the tank. Just using a thinner material made more sense here. Then there's trim. And oh boy is there a lot of trim. So most of the trim on this aquarium is made of pine and any of the flat pieces that are together I have these T-beams here around the main doors the larger ones uh, any of the flat pieces that you see on the columns flat pieces down here on the sides of the skirts and the bottom of the skirt all of that is pine trim that I've made myself from dimensional lumber you know two by fours two by sixes I ran it through the table saw myself I ran it through a chop saw myself and I used a hand sander that was battery operated to sand everything. There's an enormous amount of work milling all this trim myself. The exceptions to that though are the corner pieces on the columns, the skirts of the tank and also on a few of my doors here. The trim that was 90 degree corner trim, it was just not going to be time effective for me to try and mill that myself. I really didn't have the best tool set up for it and because of that I just went ahead and purchased that trim from Menards or Home Depot. There are a couple exceptions on the trim though that I want to talk about. There is some oak trim here uh, that I use some scrap oak that was left over from building the bottom seal beam that's holding the bottom glass in place. I had enough to make a few trim pieces and I put it on here with the finish on here and everything. You really can't tell that it's oak unless you look really close. But for me, it just was going to give me a little bit of a thought back to that part of the build. Thought it was something that just fun to put in here. And the last type of wood I use for exterior finishing is this dark looking wood here. It might not show up well on camera. But this is actually a wood that's naturally purple in color. It's called Purple Heart. It's an exotic hardwood. And I've actually had this lumber for over 20 years. 
My dad and I picked this lumber out back when I was in high school and I used some of it for some shop projects. We had some that I just never got around to using. So, you know, it basically has sat in garages, basements, storage units, apartments, houses, everything in between for 20 years. And I said, you know what? It's time to, to use this wood. It's beautiful. And I really think uh, it looked nice here to use it for this front trim of the tank. I've also used Purple Heart in a few different parts of the tank here, which really leads into the actual style and finish here that I went with. With the Purple Heart, I went ahead and also used small pieces of it throughout the exterior finishing. I wanted to add some artistic flair to the outside of this tank. And knowing that you have to have a minimum of at least 15 pieces of flare, I went ahead and have 21 pieces of flare here in the form of Purple Heart spread throughout the exterior of the finishing. And this all was a happy accident for me that really helped me go down the style path for this exterior. When I was building these doors, the first thing I had to do was build this pine trim for them as every one of these pieces of plywood had at least a slight degree of a warp in it. It's just such an enormous piece. It's not going to lay flat. It needed some type of reinforcement to straighten it out. So I came up with these T-beam pieces of pine trim to put around. And without going into too much detail, every one of these pieces around here probably took about 40 minutes each to make because you had to go to the store and pick out lumber that was really straight and bring it home or go through all the existing lumber you have, pick it out, and you had to run it through the table saw, match up the pieces, sand them down uh, with a hand sander, and then you had to glue them and nail them together in a custom jig. So it was a very labor intensive part of this build. And the very first door that I made, which is actually the one next to this, uh, I cut my piece of trim for the side to size and I was a sixteenth of an inch short. I was very upset because I was like, I'm going to have to redo this. I can't reuse it anywhere. And then I said, you know what? No. I'm going to own this. This is going to fit into the style. It's going to allow me to add some flair. And I decided right then and there, I said, I'm going to make gaps on all of the trim in every one of these doors. I had different little different sizes to add pieces of purple heart in there just to give it that artistic character and flair. I really like it and that all goes into the style and finish I chose. Now I'm going to call it a rustic weathered look and whether or not it really is that in design terminology doesn't really matter to me. That's what I'm going for. I decided from that point on that I don't need things to fit perfectly together. In fact, I tried to make everything not fit perfectly together on purpose to a certain extent. And then when it came to finish, I ended up going with a Verithane product uh, that's a weathered gray, and it's a stain polyurethane in one. It's oil-based, and it is gloss, is what I went with. And I really liked the way this looked because it's not an even finish. You know, I thought a lot about colors that I wanted to do down here. I prefer really dark wood stains if I'm doing a natural wood stain. The problem is it's such a big piece of furniture it would have looked like a black hole in the middle of the basement here because it would have been so dark. I don't particularly care for really light naturally colored wood stains. So this weathered gray I thought was a really nice balance between not too dark, not too light, and then when I applied some onto a piece, I really liked the, what I was seeing. All of the panels here have been hand brushed with this stain poly with one coat, uh, maybe a couple touch up areas and some pieces, but I hand brushed all of it. And what I like about this, and it might not be for everyone, is it doesn't have a consistent finish. It is broken up and blotchy and it has some character to it. So you get areas here where it's very light, you can see the wood grain through it. You can also get really dark areas where you really don't catch the wood grain. And you get everything in between, you get brush strokes in here, 
It's not a consistent finish. And I really like that because it plays into how this aquarium is also going to function. So why did I go with this style and finish of things not being perfect and uneven finish on it? Why not make this a piece of ultra fine woodworking? Well, I could have done that. But we go back to those principles I talked about. First one, time. I got this done in seven months. I can tell you if this was a piece of fine woodworking that I was trying to do, this would have taken two or three years for the level that I would have gone for. Budget, uh, we would have quadrupled it, maybe quintupled it easily. Because if you're striving for fine woodworking and perfection, any mistake you make, you're gonna, you're gonna redo it. For example, my happy accident here of putting little pieces of Purple Heart in to fill in some gaps wouldn't have worked with fine woodworking. If I was going to do that, everything would have to be even and equal and to the liking that I want for it, which would have just ballooned the cost. Any of those mistakes, I would have had to scrap it and redo it, and it would have just ballooned those costs way up. Now, from an aesthetics point of view and the principles, it's going to look great. The problem I have is for how long? Functionality is going to be the thing that dooms fine woodworking for me with this exterior finishing. And um, the fact is, this is a functional piece of furniture. This isn't in a museum behind glass walls or those little ropes they have in museums that separate things. This is a working piece of furniture. I'm going to use it every day. It is a saltwater aquarium, which is one of the harshest substances out there for furniture. It eats things. There's going to be splashes. There's going to be spills. There's going to be scratches and boo-boos that happen. Matter of fact, I didn't even have the exterior finishing fully done with all its trim. And I had already made a few boo-boos on it with little scratches. I dripped some glue on it, which lifted up some of the stain. You know, little things like that happen if you are going for ultra fine woodworking and perfect finishes. Well, guess what? Those things happen, your perfect finish is now garbage. And you get to redo it again. And I just look at it and go, I've already had to do some touch ups. And with this stain poly and this weathered gray and being a broken up, uneven finish here, I just get the brush and just. Do a couple quick brush strokes and it's done. And you won't even know that it's there because it's how the whole finish looks in the first place. So that's what really directed me into this, you know, rustic weathered look. But that's why I didn't go with fine woodworking. And I really think this suits my taste, style, the finish I like. My wife is happy with it. However, there's one more thing to talk about and that is the oh so important functionality of this aquarium exterior. When it comes to functionality of the aquarium exterior, the canopy system and doors is so critical to humidity control. With this volume of water in an enclosed space, you must have a really good solid humidity control plan. And the aquarium exterior is a major part of that. All 11 canopy doors when they are closed are sealed and latched and do not allow air from the main basement to come in and they don't allow air from the canopy to come out into the basement basically containing all the humidity generated by this aquarium inside. I also have a ventilation system set up and at the far end of the tank by the overflow I am sucking air out of this canopy creating a negative air pressure. For the air to flow into the canopy, I have an air intake. And actually this large block of Purple Heart up here is not just for show, it's also functional because it hides the air intake for the canopy. And I just have some basic furnace filters up here now, but with the air being sucked out of the canopy on the far end, air from the main part of the basement gets pulled in here. That is very important to this humidity control system and I'll have more videos on it in the future. 
But that is the primary function of these canopy doors, is to keep humidity control working as it's supposed to. Now, for this aquarium canopy, I've got a couple different styles of doors. The first style of door I have is on the front of the tank here, a little shorter door. There's four of those in total. These are made shorter due to either house structure being in the way or for plumbing and ventilation ducting. The first thing you'll notice with this is that each one of these doors has got foam all the way around it. And this is uh, HVAC weather seal foam and use it in things like windows. And this foam being all the way around when the door is closed and latched, it slightly compresses this foam. Now it's an open cell foam so water and air technically can go through it. However, when it's compressed, you know, air and moisture are going to look for the path of least resistance. So as long as there's an easier route for that to flow, it's not going to come through here. And so far it is working as it's expected to by keeping the humidity generated from this aquarium inside the canopy. So each one of these doors uh, has door latches. Some of these I just use little sliding latches and cut a little piece of steel off so they slide straight. They're all coated with two coats of Pond Shield epoxy, just like the bottom of the tank is for waterproofing. So everything in here has been moisture proof. The other important thing is all these doors have some form of gas strut on them. This is a 40 pound gas strut here. Uh, all the doors use these except for one on the very far end by the overflow box. That just uses a couple smaller versions of this. And this opens up the door really nicely on these smaller doors, opens them no problem. The only thing I had to do because this is such a powerful uh, gas strut. I did have to make an, a custom aluminum plate here with some stainless steel screws and I bolted it to this plate because literally uh, it was ripping the screws out because this is such a, a small door that doesn't even allow this gas strut to fully open. Just something I had to do on these on three of the four short doors. The last style of exterior canopy door I have are the big ones. There are seven of these in total. These are the main canopy doors. And very similar to the short ones that are all sealed with weather foam. Uh, with these, the gas struts don't allow the doors to open quite all the way. And they're a much heavier door and larger. And they don't really need to open all the way. And you can see I have plenty of room to work in here if I've got to feed the fish or do anything uh, inside the tank that's just minor maintenance. I do it just fine. And if I need to slide the equipment rack out, I can open up these doors all the way to get full clearance of the lighting and equipment racks. Now, if you follow me for a while, you'll know these lighting and equipment racks too. They do fully extend out. However, I didn't design them to do that without some type of stanchion post to support their weight. So if I do need to do that work, I'll have a stanchion that'll hold up the door and the lighting and equipment rack while I'm working on it. So just real basic things here uh, that were considered. I made the doors as high as I could to maximize my access in here. You can see the foam is around here just as the other doors all the way around. But I have easy access to everything in here and into the tank. One thing I do have that's a little different here is the door latch style I went with. These are like security uh, latches that I use and they just go into a little receiver on the door side here. I originally had these hooks on the door side and the receivers over here and it was just a nightmare to try and get them to latch because you had to just get this just right to slide in. So now that I've reversed all of them, uh, it's real easy to do. It just takes a couple of fingers to kind of line it up and put it in. And it, it's real easy to latch each one of these doors now. Uh, so I thought this was a great way to do this. And again, we're slightly compressing this foam when the door is closed to make an air seal here. And I also tried to keep all the hardware for the door, my gas struts where I can, uh, out of the interior of the tank so that they're not exposed to all this humidity. So the main thing about these canopy doors is one, they're part of the humidity control system, and two, they're here for access and ease of use. So far, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. These doors can be opened and closed in a few seconds with these latches, and they're in there nice and secure. 
and you can't see any of that when the doors are closed. So that is the functionality of the canopy door system. However, there's one more piece of functionality on this aquarium exterior that I want to talk about. The last piece of functionality I want to cover today is the bottom skirt sections of this tank. For all the exterior finishing on here, I tried to think about functionality and the one challenge I was thinking of with the bottom of this tank is how do I make this to where it still will give me access underneath the tank if I need it. Now I don't have any plumbing or ventilation or anything under there that needs to be worked on but I still want to be able to get under the tank to look and do some inspections from time to time to make sure we don't have a problem forming that I'm not aware of. So in order to do that, I made every one of these sections removable. It makes it real simple for me to be able to just pull the bottom section of the tank off. I can easily do an inspection. If I have to do a repair, it'll be real easy here. And something that I didn't immediately think of, although it very quickly was realized is, if I need to do a significant amount of work inside the tank, where I'm gonna have to uh, you know, go for a swim, or I'm putting a bunch of corals or fish in, where there's gonna be a lot of splashing and potential for spills, I can pull these sections off and you won't even have the risk of damaging this part of the exterior furniture because you can move it to another location. The bottom seal beam of the tank is fully waterproof. So again, it just little things like this, I think, are really important to share. And the nice thing is with the style I went with here, having some gaps and things where things don't always look perfect. When this is all set up here, uh, you don't even know that it can be removed. This isn't meant to be a step or anything, but I think this really was something I liked on this too, is that to not only get the functionality in the canopy, but also get some on the bottom of the tank so I can inspect the stand and you know move this out of the way since it's in the, the biggest splash zone of all. Well, that's the exterior finishing of the 4200 gallon. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. I'll try to answer them as best I can. If you like today's video, go ahead and give that thumbs up. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you haven't noticed, the tank's full of water, uh, RODI water in fact, and I'm getting ready to put in salt and get this aquarium up and running. It's going to be a really exciting time for this build to see it actually coming online. If you want to even see more, I'm also on Instagram. I'm also a member of the Reef Beef Discord group. I often post a lot of what's going on with my build there in the member section. Thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video.